Uh, it's never showed it coming in or going out. Um, and I've heard that same story with other business owners that I know down in the downtown area. <clears throat> but that's only in the downtown area. So I know there are other neighborhoods that have you know old lead pipes, and they have shown um, elevated levels in their samples. Um, I, I've been told, and I, I think I read in the Kettering report, that it, two percent of samples show elevated levels. So it's certainly not everywhere, um, but it's a concern. How pissed were you when you heard that they were going to be switching the, the water from Detroit to the Flint River? Because it's right, right out there. Well, okay, so. I think hindsight is 2020, but if I'm honest, I wasn't pissed at the time because what I felt at the time is that Detroit was kind of taking advantage of the situation. Uh, there is a long-term plan to connect uh, via a new water line that's going to um, Lake Huron. And I I felt like, well, we we're going to do what we we're going to do anyway and test and, and filter. And I thought using the Flint River, which, which is clean, there is no lead in the Flint River, right? Um, but yes, it would need to be treated correctly, and it was, and I think that's the problem. So at the time, <clears throat> it made perfect sense to me, and I think most people, um, to save the money. And I think what happened is it wasn't it wasn't handled properly, and uh, that came as a surprise to some, and not to others. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, you know, how do your heart must go out for these other families and their children, and and sort of the long term effects it's going to have on this community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I. Yeah, that's um, like it's the basic thing. Like you, you, your responsibility as a parent is to make sure that you, you raise your kids and and they're safe. And um, yeah, it's <clears throat> yeah, very. It's the emotion is everywhere in this, and I think that's uh, that's understandable. And like I feel it, and I I think it's also clouding some of the issue because like at some point we do need to isolate and and actually take action and do things, um, and so. Yeah, the emotion of it and the fact that it's children makes it makes it a tough um, tough issue. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up. from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and and during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I, and I, I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> The top banker in Davos Insider recently admitted that an economic collapse is intimate because central banks are completely out of ideas. The banker, William White, says the global debts and stresses on the financial system are worse than what it was in 2007. He practically admitted that Keynesian economics were a failure by stating that macroeconomic ammunition to fight further economic downturns were essentially all used up. Stock markets suffered their worst start to the year since the Great Depression. Around the world, stock prices dropped due to the downfall of China and the collapse of oil prices. The price of gold is exploding as people seek stability for what remains of their wealth. The Dow Jones dropped 7% in the first two weeks of 2016, and even worse, the Shanghai Index was down 18%. China posted its worst economic growth in 25 years, and tens of thousands of factory workers are fixing to lose their jobs. And tens of thousands of Americans are also about to lose their jobs as oil sales were below half the break-even price producers need in order to stay in operation. And Walmart's closing hundreds of stores while other retailers are suffering the worst yearly start since 2009. And despite all this, Obama actually had the audacity to suggest that. Anyone claiming that America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. Right now, the economy is worse than what it was before the 2008 financial crisis, but just how bad is it going to be? Well, for one thing, the world's elites over the past year have been buying up secret hideaways and remote locations to escape potential riots caused by a cataclysmic event. According to economist Robert Johnson, head fund managers all over the world are buying up airstrips and farms in places like New Zealand because they think they need a getaway from potential civil unrest due to income inequality. In fact, a 2014 NASA-funded study revealed that civilization as we know it is headed for an irreversible collapse. The study used historical data showing that the process of rise and collapse is actually a recurrent cycle found throughout history. According to the study, the fall of the Roman Empire, as well as so many other advanced empires, all testimony to the fact that advanced, sophisticated, complex, and creative civilizations can be both fragile and impermanent. And there's compelling evidence to suggest that the United States, particularly its economy, is also collapsing. For one thing, the Federal Reserve System, a private banking cartel that in 1913 was given the exclusive right to create money, caused the stock market crashes of 1929, 1987, and 2008. <laughs> Gee, a monopoly on the creation of money. And what do you think the Federal Reserve System has done with it over the past hundred years? Simple. They've created so much money now that the value of the dollar has declined 96%. They create money out of nothing with a keystroke for their buddies and government and Wall Street, which we the people pay for through the loss of the value of the money in our pockets, otherwise known as inflation. Now there's so much money in the system thanks to the Fed's so-called quantitative easing that experts suggest that the stock market is overvalued 80%. The U.S. dollar is now so devalued that banks are trying to charge customers to keep their money in the bank or to even use a debit card. And in 2013, Chase Bank, which is at the top of the pyramid in the corporate banking governmental structure, imposed capital controls on small business owners to prevent money leaving the country. Let's not also forget that the world's largest banks are extremely overexposed to derivatives. 
A derivative is a legal bet on the future value or performance of an entity, such as an asset, index, or an interest rate. So in other words, a derivative, unlike stocks and bonds, isn't actually an investment in something that actually exists. Imagine derivatives as bets on a horse race and Wall Street as a giant casino where all these bets are taking place. To put it all in perspective, Goldman Sachs actually owns 341 times as many derivatives than assets. And with this excessive amount of risk versus assets, these big banks could easily crash world markets, destroying what's left of the global economy, leaving us in economic oblivion. And there's other signs that the US economy is headed for a large scale recession. For one thing, historically, as the stock market speculation grew in the 1920s, so did the height of skyscrapers. After the end of World War I, there was a huge surge in the construction of skyscrapers as a real estate boom swept the U.S. fueled by the Federal Reserve's expansion of the money supply. This is called the skyscraper curse. Historically, there's an explosion in skyscraper construction right before an economic crisis. As the Mises Institute points out, the building of record-setting skyscrapers does not cause world economic crises. The records are merely symptoms of the underlying cause of world economic bubbles, sustained artificially low interest rates by central banks. And today we see both artificially low interest rates and an explosion of skyscraper construction across the world. In fact, in 2014, nearly 100 skyscrapers over 650 feet tall were built, setting a new record. And according to the skyscraper curse, the economy will soon implode. And to further add to the evidence, the Royal Bank of Scotland even warned its clients to sell everything and exit the stock market as soon as possible. The bank is freaking out in particular over the plunge in oil prices. And although we know OPEC was keeping the supply of oil artificially high to bankrupt U.S. oil producers, particularly shale producers, the price dropped below what OPEC wanted. In fact, Saudi Arabia now admits that the price of oil is hurting its economy. But why is the price of oil so low? Well, it's pretty simple. The demand for oil is now following the slowdown in the economy. All this combined reveals that the global economy is heading for another 2008 style financial crisis, or even worse, a 1929 style Great Depression. This is Kit Daniels with Infowars.com reporting for Resistance News. A Southern California gas company, Gaswell, has been leaking the simple hydrocarbon known as methane at a rate of 110,000 pounds per hour since October of 2015, according to UC Davis scientist Stephen Conley. That number is roughly a quarter of the methane emissions of the entire state of California, a rate of climate pollution equal to the amount seven and a half million cars put out every day. The methane facility is the fifth largest in the United States and the largest in the Western United States. The mountain of gas stored at Californians Aliso Canyon storage facility is 8,000 feet deep and measures 3,000 pounds per square inch. Officials estimate it will have released 10 million tons of methane worth at least a billion dollars by the predicted end of the event in March. UC Davis scientist Stephen Conley says, to put this into perspective, the leak effectively doubles the emission rate for the entire Los Angeles basin. On a global scale, this is big. Given our 1,500 hours of, of experience flying over oil and gas fields and all different types of emission sources, this one is 10 or 20 times bigger than the next largest emission source that I've ever seen. Meanwhile, thousands have been forced from their homes and businesses, and two schools have been closed after residents of the city of Porter Ranch in the San Fernando Valley pleaded with the Southern California Gas Company to relocate them after many experienced nosebleeds, headaches, and nausea. It's pretty gnarly looking is what I think of it. I think it's terrible, and it's making a lot of people sick around here. I know that. It's, they've got to do something about it. California's Governor Jerry Brown didn't declare the disaster as a state of emergency until two months had passed, the emergency now being regarded as the BP oil spill on land. The governor had been too busy protecting a $2 million-plus kickback cookie jar that he didn't even have time to visit the site and ignored it altogether in his latest State of State address. According to the Washington Free Beacon, Kathleen Brown, the governor's sister, sits on the board of directors of Sempra Energy, 
the parent company of Southern California Gas. Brown serves on SEMPRA's Corporate Governance and Environmental Health Safety and Technology Committees and received $188,300 in compensation. According to California campaign finance records, since 1992, SEMPRA has made over $3 million in total political contributions, a 